crime is everybody's problem. We tend to think we live in a cocoon. It's not going to happen to me. But sooner or later, it's going to happen. Crime affects everyone one way or another, whether it's from, from people stealing, making prices go up, to um, just the, the, the attitude you have within your city. If you don't feel safe to go anywhere, you don't go anywhere, and it hurts, it hurts the community. If everybody would get involved, we could, we could reduce that effect and it would change the outlook of the whole community. It would just make such a big difference. Um, but everybody needs to get involved to do it. Personal involvement is highly important in making any system work because no matter how many police officers we put out, we don't have enough police officers to cover every square inch of this city. We need the citizen's eye in order to make it work. Crime is everybody's problem because um, it just touches your life where you live. If you're afraid to be in your neighborhood, you just can't, you know, you can't have a good life that way. Crime is everyone's problem. Whether it is happening on my street or block, or if it's happening in the far side of Foxfire, or if it's happening in a nearby community. If it affects one, it affects all. We need to educate all the citizens of the community to let them know what's happening across the community so they can be proactive rather than reactive when it comes to crime reduction and prevention. What Community Watch do, they inform the citizens of what's taking place in the community. I recently spoke with some folks and I asked them, you know, about their community. They were unaware simply because they had no way of being informed. Community watch programs are so important because it takes a community to keep us safe. But there's only so many police officers in the city, so it takes us to, ba to help them. Everyone has come to the realization that the police force simply can't do everything. So it's up to the citizens of each neighborhood to pretty much watch out for one another so as to get a, a better relationship within the community itself and to keep crime down to the absolute minimum. The biggest problem we currently face is, uh, I gotta use the word apathy. Uh, people now, uh, we don't have the same problems now as we had when we reorganized it some 10, 12 years ago. And therefore, it is a bit difficult to keep uh, and maintain people's interest, to keep the uh, citizens uh, engaged. The biggest problem we have is getting more people involved with the Community Watch. Um, we, have, we have meetings every month, but we just can't get the attendance. We have a large neighborhood watch area for Lafayette Village, and it's 1,100 homes in the area. And yet, I, I used to get 40 or 50 people at the meetings, we're down to about 20, 25 people at the meetings. Our neighborhood is an older neighborhood, so we have been dealing with a lot of crime and blight, or blight, and then that brings in a lot of the crime. One of the biggest problems we have in our Community Watch program is non-participation. And we're not sure if that's because they're not informed or they're not concerned. We're trying to bridge that gap to ensure that they are informed what's going on. because we meet every month at one of the churches in the neighborhood. We did flyers up and we delivered them to every house in the neighborhood. And we did that for the first couple of years. And now we have signs that are on every entrance to the neighborhood that are put out the weekend before the meetings. We um, email, we just try to keep things um, fresh and keep them in the loop and just keep that door of communication open. How we've addressed it, we, like I said, we're using billboards, we're using emails, we're using now one great feature out which has not been employed a lot in the city is reverse 911. What that does, that allows the crime specialist to make a call one or two days prior to our meeting to inform the citizens of the community that we're having a community watch. And then what we do as well, we have foot patrols, we have bicycle patrols, and all these things work as a process for getting people informed about community watch programs new people coming to the community. We ensure that uh, we uh, get uh, information out to them and try and bring them on board. And it's an ongoing process 
of keeping everyone informed and maintaining our interest. Difficult task. We have, uh, we participate in the National Night Out each year, uh, right there on Hope Mills Road, so it's very visible for people to see, and we have a lot of people come out. Um, we do the neighborhood cleanup during Fayetteville Beautiful Week, and uh, get out there with our t-shirts and stuff to make ourselves known, um, and any way we can get in the community where people can see us. We, uh, at each meeting, encourage the individuals that are participating to bring a neighbor, invite a friend, anything that would, that would uh, convince them that it's in their best interest to get out and find out what's going on. Rather than waiting until they become a victim and then they show up wanting to know what's the Community Watch got to offer. It's better to be proactive than it is to have to react to something in order to, to find out what services and benefits may be available to them. We go door to door, we hand out flyers, let people know that we're about having uh, good communications with police, uh, city inspections, but we also try to make it fun. We try to run a, a program, a meeting that is very well organized, um, just to keep people's interest, uh, keep, it, keep it focused. We work very closely with Connie at, at Crime Prevention. She uh, sends us emails anytime there's incidents or, or th important things we need to know. And it comes, to, it comes to me and then I forward it throughout the community through email and stuff because I have everybody's email that's, that's come to the meetings. Um, we also have a Facebook page that we can put announcements on. And uh, each month when we have our meetings, Lieutenant Owen from our district is there usually to discuss any problems pertaining to our area specifically. So with that hand in hand, we get to let him know what we see and he lets us know stuff that we need to know up front. And it works very well. We had a strong, have a strong relationship with the Fayetteville Police Department. We have the uh, talk to the, the chief. He's come to our meeting stating that he will support us not only in words, but in deeds and action to help reduce crime. Our crime statistic, I would say five years ago, was equivalent of almost three pages. We've reduced that from three pages down to less than that of a half page. Yes, we do have a lot of call for services, but the point is this, the police become more visible. We've got our crime specialists that they are more than they ever has been before. They have a relationship with the people in the community. The community watch coordinators can easily communicate with them at any given time in reference to whatever subject they want to talk about when it comes to people and personnel safety. We work very closely with the uh, community watch, have for years. We're very closely with the police because we work very closely with other departments. If it has a particular need, uh, we go directly to department heads oftentimes and uh, work it that way rather than going through elected officials. Um, and I got to tell you, it does pay dividends when we work closely with uh, community watch uh, from the police department, or crime prevention I should say, as well as our police to the substation. We know them quite well and they know us quite well, those of us who are head up to Community Watch. So we, you see, we work closely with both the police as well as department, as well as our uh, elected officials. The police force has also changed its routine for assigning uh, policemen to each of the areas. They used to do it on a rotational basis from one area to the next. Now we have, for all intent and purpose, the same officers assigned to our area. So they become more familiar with the people in the community they get a better idea of what cars need to be parked in what driveways and what kids need to be playing where. And even from the standpoint of, of being visually in contact with some of the residents, uh, I think it helps out across the board um, from their standpoint and obviously from our standpoint. It used to be that we had to pretty much introduce the new policemen every time they were rotated from one area to another to the community in order to give them a, a good idea of what's going on and what areas to be concerned about. Now we don't have to do that. We see virtually the same guys all the time 
We have the same police lieutenant. He knows us personally. He comes to our meetings. Uh, I think the police force, more than anything else, has, has had the, the most effect on what we're doing. feel that the government can um, help us or help the communities by just being more user friendly. I think that's uh, a lot of people think sometimes when they call uh, the local government, oh I get the run around. So just being more user friendly, being approachable, being available to meet with residents. And I've really seen a, a big improvement and I think uh, they're doing a good job at it now. But yeah, we could always use improvement. Everybody can. That also goes for the residents. Residents need to uh, just push out of that shell and not be afraid to contact, you know, the city officials and uh, let your voice be heard. The one thing that I would like to see happen, and believe you me, I believe we have a very good police department and has had, and it still is. But the one thing I would like to see more of is the patrol division or the patrol officers get to know down on the ground and get to know the citizens just a little bit better. And that's the one thing I think would help us a, a, a bit better. The citizens would, be, would feel more openly, uh, uh, feel more comfortable going and talking with the police. Other than that, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm satisfied, Trelly, on this truth I know. We can't have a, a police officer on every corner. We can't afford that. Realizing that the majority of incidents occur with youngsters between the ages of 17 and 25, if we were to somehow introduce a scared straight program where maybe those that are on the edge of becoming felons, <laughs> felons well, uh, producers of crime for which we would ultimately be responsible, if they were introduced to individuals in the jailhouse and got some idea as to how they live, how they act, the things that they're exposed to, that might better prepare them for not becoming a criminal. Well, here in Fayetteville, I think the big, biggest help we could have is to increase our police force, because we just don't have enough. Um, when things are happening in different places, they pull from other zones, and then we're left sort of short, and somebody from someplace else has to come in. So if we can increase the police force and get more involvement from the community itself, those are the two things that would help us the most. People. They're going to need people. And allocating funding for people that need, i.e. police officers, whether it be crime prevention specialists, whether it be uh, patrollers, whether it be uh, police officers. And we know that with that increase requires additional revenue. So therefore, perhaps maybe a citizen on patrol, perhaps be one area to go into. I would like to see many more younger people with families participate, and not just uh, us old grandparents, I have to say it that way, us old grandparents. I like to see the young people come and participate. It doesn't matter if you are an owner, renter, leaser, if you live within the boundaries of the community, then you should have a concern. I just want it to keep growing. I want more and more people to come just so they get involved and so, so that we can make the community safer and whole. For the Massey Hill Community Watch, I would love to see in the future that we have more um, just nice things to attend, beautification projects, more um, social things instead of so much the crime and the blight. We would like to move it forward where we're just focusing on uh, good, like beautiful gardens, uh, things to make Massey Hill beautiful, um, just, just friendly things, cookouts, not so much stress with the crime and the blight, but just having Massey Hill a thriving community. I would like 100% participation. I know that's not going to happen because it would say 10% of the population make 90% of the population works. But what I would like to see on a personal basis, I would like to see the military involved more in the community. They are one of our transient group. They're not here for long, but I would like for them to come 
involved so that they will realize that not only this is a place for them to be for a short period of time, but this is where they leave their loved ones when they're gone. And Fort Bragg being here, they're gone quite a bit. So we want them to feel secure when they move into a neighborhood to understand that they, when they leave their loved ones behind, they will be in a safe environment rather than getting bad news downrange or wherever they may be. Um, to say that we're going to get 100% participation, I know we won't, but if we could bring just one more, one brings one, we'll be amazed at the kind of results we can produce. And together we can fight crime. We can beat it.